In the next few videos, we're going to cover amino acids. This is a very high yield topic for the MCAT, so you definitely want to spend some extra time going over these videos. So first of all, with amino acids, you want to know what their basic structure is. You have a carbon in the center called the alpha carbon bound to four groups. The four groups include a carboxyl group, an amino group, a hydrogen, and one of 20 possible side chains. Now what's unique about amino acids is that the carboxyl group is acidic and the amino group is basic. As a result, amino acids can act as both acids and bases, so we say that they are amphoteric molecules. Now, the fact that amino acids are bound to four groups should make you start to think about chiral centers. And that's a good idea because almost all of the amino acids are chiral. There's actually only one amino acid that's achiral, and that's glycine. The reason why glycine is not chiral is because its side chain is a hydrogen atom. So because it's bound to two hydrogens, glycine is not a chiral molecule. It does not have a chiral center. But the remaining 19 of the 20 other amino acids, they are all chiral. And as chiral molecules, they have enantiomers. So over here, I have enantiomers of an amino acid, alanine, which has a side chain of CH3, a methyl group. Now, before when we looked at enantiomers, we would assign them absolute configurations of R or S. When we're dealing with carbohydrates and amino acids, we tend to use a different configuration instead. We use D and L. And the way we assign this is by looking at your amino acids in the Fischer projection. Now, remember, the Fischer projection does not mean that your molecule is flat. It's planar, right? Remember, the Fischer projection, you have this plus sign, but this plus sign has some substituents coming out of the page towards you and some substituents going into the page away from you. Specifically, the horizontal components are coming out of the page towards you, and the vertical components, these substituents, are going into the page away from you. The way I usually like to remember it is to pretend that someone's trying to come give you a hug, so that way you know the horizontal substituents are coming out of the page towards you. So, when your amino acid is drawn in the Fischer projection, you want to orient the molecule such that the most oxidized carbon is placed on the top, which is the carboxyl group. When the carboxyl group is placed on the top, you then want to look at the position of the amino group. If the amino group is facing the left, then you have the L amino acid. If the amino group is facing the right, then you have the D amino acid. These differences are important, and we see this in biology. The vast majority of amino acids and proteins are L amino acids. There are a few, but not very many, D amino acids and proteins of cells. Now, one other thing I want to mention, this capital D and capital L might remind you of the lowercase d and lowercase l we saw with enantiomers before, with optical activity, dextrorotatory versus levorotatory for clockwise and counterclockwise rotation of plane polarized light. It's important to know that these are not related with each other. So capital D does not mean it's going to rotate light clockwise, and L does not mean it's going to rotate light counterclockwise, right? Capital D, capital L, unrelated to lowercase d and lowercase l. And one way you can tell this is because capital D and capital L, you can determine by looking at the structure of the molecule alone. That's not possible with lowercase d and lowercase l. Those can only be determined experimentally by, by measuring the way that your sample rotates plane polarized light. Now, R and S can also be determined looking at the structure, but again, they are unrelated to D and L. Essentially, none of these are related together. And the reason why is because if you look at the amino acids, if you looked at this L amino acid, you would notice that it has an S configuration, and this D amino acid has an R configuration. This is true for a number of amino acids. L is S, and D is R. However, that's not always the case. 
For example, for cysteine, the L version of cysteine is R and the D version of cysteine is S. So no trends there at all.